uh, with our General Assembly interns ever since. So I'm really excited to share this evening with you and with them. Um, we've got a lot of fun things ahead and meaningful things ahead. Um, so while you're introducing yourselves in the chat, maybe your name and your pronouns, where you're joining us from, and uh, favorite breakfast food, or maybe what breakfast for dinner you're enjoying. Um, I would like to um, let you know that we welcome any uh, gifts to Presbyterian Peace Fellowship this evening, and we'll give you a link in the chat to that end um, and talk more about that toward the end. But I'd like to introduce um, some of our interns as well. And before that, before I forget, uh, I would love to pray for our breakfast for dinner. Let us pray. God, creator of all things, we give you thanks for this time together. Thanks for the hands that raised the food, for the hands that prepared the food, and for all the hands that are breaking this virtual bread together this evening. Bless this time that it might be meaningful and fun and connectional and all of it to your glory. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So we have three interns uh, for the General Assembly through the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship, Kieran and Hannah and Valerie, and I will start off by inviting them to introduce themselves and maybe share a little bit about uh, why they are interns right now, what this means to them. So go ahead, friends. Hi all, my name is Hannah Johnson. I am coming from Philadelphia, she, her pronouns. Um, I have been involved with PPF for a short amount of time. Um, I started to dip my toe in the water in the fall of 2019, and then the world quickly crumbled around us soon after. So uh, this is my way of trying to get back involved to um, see what it's all about. And I've been really enjoying my time um, learning about other ways that I can be Presbyterian. Hello, everyone. My name is Kieran Wood. I am um, from the central Nebraska area, but specifically I'm from Grand Island. He, him pronouns. Obviously, just like uh, Colleen had mentioned, I'm one of the interns this year. Um, for me, trying to join PPF was something that, you know, I've been extremely grateful for and um, with that, I've also had an opportunity earlier um, last month to um, join the in-person delegation that was uh, sent to kind of observe the stuff that was going on in this year's General Assembly. I was able to talk to some of the commissioners and spend an amazing time getting to know some of the other members of PPF a lot more intimately. Hi everyone, my name is Valerie Landis. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and I am currently residing in Lawrence, Kansas at um, the University of Kansas studying environmental studies. Um, so that, that passion for the environment and me being a lifelong Presbyterian, it's kind of what drew me to PPF. I was really interested in their fossil free work um, and kind of the work that was done there to think deeply and really act intentionally about our relationship with creation. Um, so that's initially what drew me to PPF, but now I just, I'm so inspired by the overarching goals and the issues that they amplify, um, I think they're doing important work. So I've loved being an intern with them so far. Um, now that we've all kind of introduced ourselves, I'm going to give everyone a quick overview of what tonight is going to look like. It's going to be lots of fun. Um, we're going to hear from some really, really awesome people. We're going to hear from the Reverend Bart Smith, who's been a particularly impactful advocate and activist on behalf of civil rights. Um, we're also going to hear from Dr. Harry Eberts and Miranda Viscoli from New Mexicans to Prevent Gun Violence, um, who've done a lot of work to change the culture surrounding gun violence in New Mexico. Um, and we're also gonna hear from Dr. Svetlana Romenko, um, who's gonna be our keynote speaker. Um, and they are the campaign co-founder and coordinator of Stand with Ukraine. Um, so we're gonna hear from those lovely people. And we're also gonna play some fun trivia about our guest speakers tonight, which I am super excited for. And of course, we're gonna eat some awesome breakfast. So very excited to have you all here. Um, before we jump in, I'm going to give everyone a quick rundown about how our trivia is going to work. Um, we're going to use 
a program, I guess is the right word, called Kahoot. Um, at PPF, we are big fans of Kahoot. There's a, there's a little jingle that goes along with it that really just makes the experience all the more better. Um, so the way it's going to work is you're going to have a, you can either use the device that you are using um, to join this Zoom call, or you can use another device um, and you're going to type kahoot.in into your web browser. I will put it in the chat right now. Um, let me type it in. You're going to type that into your browser. Oh, I sent it in the wrong thing. Hold on. Bear with me one moment. Okay, kahoot.it, and it's going to prompt you um, to enter a game pin, and we will provide that for you depending on which trivia round we're on, because there's going to be rounds, y'all, okay? Um, uh, you're going to enter a fun nickname, um, and then the trivia is going to begin, and the question and the answer choices are going to pop up on your Zoom screen, because we will be screen sharing them, um, but you will answer um on the mobile device that you've joined the game from it's going to give you colors and you're going to click the corresponding colors i feel like i'm probably confusing some people once we get into it you're going to see how it works and it's really it's really not that difficult it's lots of fun um and i do want to make a quick note that the faster you submit your answer the more points you get so if you're super competitive keep that in mind keep that in mind um, so with that, I'm going to invite Hannah, I believe, I'm not, sorry, not Hannah, Hannah, to um, start the first Kahoot or the first round of trivia. Heck yeah, y'all, let's do this thing. So when you go on Kahoot.it, you're going to type in the game pin 9322323. Two, and you're gonna put in a little nickname. I'm gonna give it another minute to see if anybody else wants to join us. Not everybody has to play, obviously, but you can't win if you don't play. Get this show on the road. Okay, our first question is What year did New Mexicans to prevent gun violence begin their work? Yes, I see some people know exactly what they're talking about. And at the top of the board, uh, of course, we, I think that's Karen. Harry Eberts, who's one of our winners tonight, played baseball from Little League through college and a summer of semi-pro. What position did he play? Yeah, this is a this is a, a deep cut. I had to Google what baseball positions are today, and two of you were with me in figuring out that pitcher and catcher are the best ones, obviously. Yeah, new creation. I see you, top of the pack. How many guns did New Mexico's 
New Mexicans Preventing Gun Violence Collect during their four gun to garden buyback programs in 2018. Yeah, such a cool organization. They collected 217. Oh, is that Timothy Watchring? Yes, Miranda has a garden that grows eight varieties of what type of vegetable? Tomatoes, hot chili peppers. We've got squash. We've got the 1996, which was a typo. We're all gonna be cool about it. Hot chili peppers. So if you need any salsa, it's your girl. Go off Christine, three in a row. Since 2016, they've been painting murals. How many have they made to date? And murals. That means our podium, let's see who's the winner. In third place, we have Colleen. Okay. Christine C, I see you. And number one, is it Tim? Oh, that Timbo. I hope you enjoyed our first round of trivia and you're ready for our second round as it comes up. And I'm going to share the video they prepared for us. Inside, we were outside earlier for uh, a video presentation to you, and it just got so windy, so we're inside, and I hope that works for you. But we're so grateful to all of you. Colleen, we can't see it. For this it's award for Thank you. And so Miranda, say if you can you hear it? <laughs> I'm right. We can hear it, we just can't see it. Oh, I don't know why that is. Give me one second, friends. Do you see it now? Yep, 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 yep. Woo! Yeah, hi everybody, this is Harry Everts. I'm pastor of the First Presbyterian Church in Santa Fe and we're sitting inside. We were outside earlier for uh, a video presentation to you and it just got too windy, so we're inside and I hope that works for you. But we're so grateful to all of you to uh, receive this award, this Peace Seekers Award for 2021. And so Miranda, say a few words. Okay. I'm Miranda. I'm co-president um, of New Mexicans to Prevent Gun Violence with Harry. Um, we've been uh, working on this issue of gun violence prevention. This is, will be 10 years. We started back in 2013 after the Sandy Hook shooting. And we have learned a lot on how, how to get gun violence prevention moving in a state that didn't want to have anything to do with us. When we first started, we had a lot of doors slammed in our face. And now we have a lot of doors opening. Um, we, we saw this as a multifaceted problem that demanded a multi-pronged approach. Um, in our urban settings, we had to create different programs than in our rural settings. And we, our motto was to meet every community where they were at and see how we can work together with these communities on gun violence prevention. And, and we're happy to say that we are definitely seeing, we're not seeing the numbers go down, but we are seeing that people more and more communities are open to all of our programs. You know, I started in gun violence prevention back in Ohio. I was a pastor in Cleveland, and I asked a, a person in charge of our group, the Ohio Coalition Against Gun Violence, what group should I get involved with when I'm going to Santa Fe? For New Mexico, I'm sure there's something going on. And she simply raised her hand, put two fingers together, and did this, as if there's nothing going on with gun violence prevention. That was back in 2011. A year later, Sandy Hook happened. And then I'm so grateful that uh, Miranda and I met up and other people in our group met up and we decided we would do something and try something and we did. A trial and error often. We, we <laughs> found out what doesn't work and that's just about as good. And we're, we're trying to get the groove now and I think we are. So exciting these days. 
Right, and probably most of our programs are working with youth. Um, a lot we use we do lose a lot of youth to gun violence in New Mexico, um, averaging three children every month, and that doesn't include injuries. That's just deaths. So what we a lot of the work we're doing right now is in schools. There are faith youth driven projects. Uh, we just finished our eleventh gun violence prevention mural in a school. Um, we are also continuing to do the student pledge against gun violence. We started a, a program called Guns to Gardens where we do gun buybacks. We just did our 14th gun buyback in New Mexico and we took in 240 guns, including a machine gun, uh, five sawed off shotguns, uh, two AK-47s and, and several AR-15s. And these are forged into gardening tools by Rob Tools in Colorado. No, I, I had tears in my eyes when I drove up to the church parking lot in Albuquerque, a Presbyterian church in La Mesa. And I had figured maybe 50, 75 people might show up, maybe we saturated the market. And what I saw then was a whole line of cars going two blocks around the church uh, to get to the parking lot for them to just give their guns away. We ran out of gift cards even. And uh, what they said was, what did they say? They said, we don't want the gift card. We don't want, we, we give gas cards, grocery cards. We don't give cash. Um, and they just said, we don't want the gift cards. We want to get rid of our gun. The last gun that came in was an AK-47. Um, one older man showed up with an AR-15 um, AR and said, I'm an NRA member and a veteran. I'm done with guns after Texas. So again, it gives our communities an opportunity to get involved in gun violence prevention, an opportunity to, to get rid of guns, an opportunity to think about, do we really need a society with this many guns when we have this much of a gun violence problem? And it's, it's exciting work that we get to do, and we're also creating a national program. So pretty, we hope by the end of the year, there will be, we will have a, na a national program that will take all of our programs combined and literally have toolkits so that if anybody's watching today or you know of anybody who wants to start their own grassroots gun violence prevention um, organization, they will have everything they need to do it. And we'll also offer free trainings to those groups so they can literally call us up and say, I want to do a mural in the school. I, got, I have the toolkit, but I have this question. What do I do? And we'll be there for them um, to help them n navigate through the process um, so that they can get this work going on in their state. And how we wish we were there with you uh, today and uh, to share the breakfast or dinner, whatever the food you would provide, would have been a lot of fun. And I know that there are many people I probably know in Presbyterian Peace Fellowship through the years, and I've admired you ever since. And so I'm grateful for the work you've done since 1944. I'm grateful for this honor you've given us. And I hope that it just spurs on some more interest in trying to get rid of guns and the violence of guns in our country. Uh, I look to you for support and for uh, inspiration as well. So many, many thanks for what you're doing. Yes, and thank you, thank you. I think I forgot to say thank you for the award. We are actually deeply honored. It was very unexpected, and it really, really means a lot to us, so thank you very much. The Presbyterian Peace Fellowship 2021 Peace Seeker Award is presented to Miranda Viscoli, Reverend Harry Eberts, and the New Mexicans to Prevent Gun Violence. In the 10 years since the shooting at the Sandy Hook Elementary School, you have created a statewide organization to change the culture for gun violence prevention in New Mexico. You have empowered students to engage in advocacy in a pledge against bringing guns to school and in self-expression through vibrant murals for gun violence prevention. You have saved lives through the Guns to Gardens movement, dismantling over 1,200 unwanted handguns and assault weapons. You have engaged elected officials of both parties to pass life-saving legislation to prevent gun violence in New Mexico. With this award, we recognize you for a legacy of activism that embodies creativity, art, imagination, determination, and love. We give you thanks. Presented at the 225th General Assembly of the PCUSA today, July 3rd, 2022.
All right. So that's an amazing, amazing testimony by Miranda and Harry. Now we're going to be moving on to start a conclude about our next Peace Seeker awardee, Reverend Bart Smith. Get ready. It's Kahoot time. The code is 407 a couple more seconds here. The code is four zero seven six four four. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, feel free to still join. You can join at any point during the quiz. First questions queued up. What church does Reverend Bart currently serve at? Is it First Presbyterian Church, St. Mark's Presbyterian Church, Second Presbyterian Church, or the Cathedral of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin? That is correct. Awesome. St. Mark's Presbyterian Church. Linda E. is in the lead. What did Reverend Bart do to advocate for voting rights? Push the sit in, yell at a bunch of people, participate in a hunger strike, or nothing. That's awesome. Yes, he participated in a hunger strike. Linda still has an amazing lead. How long was the strike? Seven, five days. 11 days or just one day? Was 11 days. So at the end of this quiz, we have piano in third place, new creation in second place, and our first place winner is Annika out of a surprise victory. Runners up, Timothy and Linda. Awesome, thank you so much. Do we have a video? Awesome. Uh, my name is Bart Smith and I serve as the pastor here at St. Mark's in Midtown, Tucson, Arizona. So I bring you greetings from Baja, Arizona. And I want to say to the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship Can't see it. for I think the going back and forth with screen sharing is messing up my system, but bear with me a moment, friends. It just gives more time for um, some uh, game talk to happen in the chat. So good. I love the friendly competition going on. It was supposed to be friendly competition? Oh, yes. The Peace Fellowship. Friendly. Got it. Friendly. <laughs> Do you see Bart? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bart Smith, and I serve as the pastor here at St. Mark's in Midtown, Tucson, Arizona. So I bring you greetings from Baja, Arizona. And I want to say to the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship, thank you so much for the honor of this award. Um, I am blessed and honored to accept it on behalf of my colleagues who do all sorts of work around voting rights. Uh, before you hear me say anything else, I want to give you an action step. Uh, please make a note to visit or just go ahead and get out your devices and visit www.turnoutsunday.com. That's the website for a strong coalition called Faiths United to Save Democracy. 
And under the leadership of the Reverend Dr. Barbara William Skinner and Reverend Jim Wallace and others, it is a multi-faith, multi-generational coalition that is organizing at the grassroots level to push back against the voter suppression that is rampant all across this country. Uh, there at that website, you, uh, who are a faith leader, will find toolkits for yourself and for your congregations to take concrete steps in your communities to safeguard the right to vote. So please do me a favor and visit turnoutsunday.com. Uh, 2022, though it's a midterm year, is a crucial year for our democracy, and we have to do everything within our power to ensure that people have a voice in the democratic process. Because as we know, uh, voter suppression and voter disenfranchisement is, is very real and very prevalent these days. Uh, two other groups that I wanna point you to. Uh, the first is, uh, Black Voters Matter, and that's with Cliff Albright and Latasha Brown. Now, they're organizing in the Black community uh, to ensure that the right to vote is secure, to uh, work against voter intimidation, to make sure that people really understand uh, how their voice is uh, being diminished, but how that they can reclaim their voice in the electoral process. So go uh, find out uh, faith, uh, excuse me, Black Voters Matter. Uh, the third group that I wanna point you to is uh, an amazing group of young organizers college student activist with a group called UNPAC, that's U-N-P-A-C. Uh, Jocelyn Garcia and uh, Shana Gallagher have led an incredible group of activists, uh, especially in key battleground states, to understand uh, the power of the young vote and to understand uh, what's happening uh, to, take that, to try to take that power away. So check out UNPAC too. But the reason that I uh, would like your, your help in doing this, uh, because the church has a moral imperative in this moment. The church has a prophetic role in ensuring the right to vote, because it is what uh, my colleague, Dr. Cor Cornell Williams Rooks calls the sacrament of our democracy. And it's, as I say, a spiritual reflection, or a sec secular reflection of the spiritual truth that all people are created in God's image and therefore have a voice in the decision-making that impacts them. Uh, but I'm, I'd be the first to admit that our democracy is fragile and it is flawed, that a lot of people have lost trust in our government institutions and forces like white supremacy and crony capitalism are doing a lot to chip away at the democratic process. But the fact is too many people have struggled and died to secure our right to vote. And this is such an urgent moment that the things that we care about, especially in PPF, things like gun violence, a prison abolition, climate change, reproductive rights, that we can't make progress on any of these really pressing issues if uh, our democracy slips from our grasp. So we have to do what we can as people of faith in our communities to mobilize our communities against voter suppression and for democracy. So again, uh, if you could visit turnoutsunday.com to find out ways that you can be that prophetic voice wherever you are. Thank you again for this award. The Presbyterian Peace Fellowship 2022 Peace Seeker Award is presented to the Reverend Bart Smith. During a time when voting rights are never certain, you have been a faithful advocate and activist. You have served as a Presbyterian witness on the Coordinating Committee for Faith for Black Lives. You worked for the passage of the Freedom to Vote Act and the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act by helping to plan and participate in a hunger strike from January 6, 2022 to, until January 17th, Martin Luther King Day. Your advocacy efforts have included arrests in civil disobedience actions on behalf of civil rights. You have worked with Faith for Black Lives and other faith leaders and justice coalitions to encourage the NFL to move the Super Bowl out of Arizona to respond to voter suppression in that state. With this award, we thank you for your faithfulness to activism and advocacy on behalf of those whose voices are too often silenced at the polls presented at the 225th General Assembly of the PCUSA today, July 3rd, 2022. Make sure to keep that applause rolling because it's time for your new favorite game, Kahoot. So we're gonna be going over a quick Kahoot about our keynote speaker today. Dr. Svetlana Romanko, and our game pin 
is 6045222 Once again today's game pin is 604 Five two two. Hey, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Today's first question. In which country does Svetlana live? Is it the United States, Germany, Ukraine, or Bulgaria? It is Ukraine. Here's Annika started off pretty close, but Colleen's about 10 points behind. Which organization does Svetlana work with? The Presbyterian Peace Fellowship, Stand with Ukraine, United Nations, and Laudato Si. Stand with Ukraine. She does also do work with Laudato Si, but she is currently doing a lot of work with Stand with Ukraine. Rad Abbey comes onto the board with 1,676 points. Where has Fidelma actively worked? Central Asia, Western Europe. East Asia or the Middle East? Central Asia. She's done a lot of work in the Caucasus region as well as many places um, in that area. Second place, Red Abbey in first place. It is the Pope. This is a Presbyterian fellowship meeting. What are they doing here? Anyway, I might make, some, I'd like to make a suggestion. Next Kahoot, we should have a little bit of competition to see who can come up with the most creative nickname. I'm Svetlana Romanko, and I'm coordinator of the Stand with Ukraine campaign to ban Russian fossil fuels and to seize all investments in Russian fossil fuel companies and infrastructure. And I'm also the founder of Razum We Stand, which is a grassroots organization where we act together to end fossil fuel war and conflict and to drive the transition to renewable energy, justice and peace in Ukraine and globally. Well, um, I'm here to tell you more about intersection and connections between the war in Ukraine, the climate crisis, energy crisis, and the crisis of peace. And of course, um, interconnections between the war and divestment from fossil fuels. So I will start from the um, war, uh, because it has been four months already while we are facing this incredible existential threat from uh, and Russian aggression. So, so far, we have also terrible consequences of the war. Uh, first of all, more than 14.5 million Ukrainians have fled their homes, while tens of thousands of civilians have been killed. The Russian attacks completely destroyed some cities on the south and the east in the center of the country as well. Atrocities uncovered in territories there that were under Russian occupation have all the characteristic of genocide of Ukrainian people. And um, enormous damage has been made to uh, ecosystems and to natural reserves. And also, of course, we will need to rebuild in the cost of estimated of one trillion of US dollars when we will win this war will end this war but the war is still raging on and uh, the war in Ukraine the climate crisis and the energy crisis have common roots and these roots are the fossil fuels 
and the Russian invasion of our country is funded as and fueled by the coal, oil, and gas industries that also drive the climate crisis. And 40% of Russia's federal budget comes from oil and gas, and its industry is among the worst in the world in terms of climate. For decades, Western oil companies courted Putin and helped him exploit Russia's vast reserves. Supported by banks in Western countries, they have poured billions into Putin's war chest and turned the blind, blind eye to his violent expansion efforts. Russian military spending in Ukraine that right now kills Ukrainians cost Putin 900 millions per day, and the EU still sending about 1 billion purchasing Russian oil and gas. So the, uh, these uh, days of the war showed the slow and overall weak response globally to the Russian aggression, but far more governmental and corporate actions in mobilizing oil and gas reserves worldwide. Also, some concrete steps on the inevitable phasing out of Russian fossils have been taken or promised to be taken in the near future. Their speed and comprehensiveness leave much to be desired. The input of all fossil fuels from Russia must be banned. We must ensure that Russian fossil fuel reserves remain stranded. They remain unrecoverable and can't fund more wars and conflicts anywhere. This is urgent and necessarily to stop the existential threat to my nation. But it's just the beginning. We need to phase out fossil fuels globally if we are to stop the existential threat to our planet. And energy companies, utilities, traders, and insurers must understand and face the fact that their money and their operations contributed to Russia's ability to wage wars, and they continue to support it. And companies like Any, Winter Shell, Dare, Total Energies, Exxon, Shell, British Petroleum, and others still joint ventures with Russian oil and gas state giants. And there are still faith institutions that divest in those fossil fuel companies, that invest, keep investments in these fossil fuel companies. And there are banks that and asset managers that still are not divesting from fossil fuel, uh, fossil fuel industry. And this is a very wrong thing to do. I have to say that even still in 2020, there was a Vatican Guide on Divestment that urged all people of faith just to divest from the industry uh, that harms to that extent, to that extension, harms the nature environment and causes a climate crisis as well. It's very harmful. And many institutions did so far. So we, we had uh, 307 Catholic institutions and much more in the world uh, divesting in total 40 billion, uh, 40 trillion of US dollars equivalent for the decade of divestment. So divestment works, especially when there is a high time to make this moral and ethical commitment to divest the money from the dirty fossil fuel industry. And I would even now say a bloody fossil fuel industry because we all see what atrocities were happening in the time of the war in Ukraine. It's an imag unimaginable, it's inhumane. So to keep money in these fossil fuel, uh, fossil fuel infrastructure and Russian companies and these banks and asset managers who fund those companies, who provide financial services for them, it's a very wrong step from the moral and ethical uh, beliefs that we share uh, as to towards towards the humanity and towards peace and towards justice, including climate justice. Because these money fund destruction and these money fund fossil fuels and fossil fuels have become a weapon of mass destruction themselves. So we have to stop both. We have to divert this money from fossil fuel industry to the renewable energy transition, to the clean energy, because dictators can't own sun and wind. They absolutely can't do that. And um, to continue, I have to say that actually this time uh, has been very com complicated in terms of uh, uh, as producers around the globe are trying to portray themselves as saviors of Ukraine and Europe with the expansion of LNG export supplies. And they are hoping that we ignore the international in agency, energy agency net zero by 2050 report said no new coal, oil, or gas projects are needed if the world is to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But climate damage can't be ignored as well as the war. 
To this, we Ukrainians who have a clear response to the fossil fuel industry and the politicians on its payroll, don't use the pain and suffering of our people to double down on production that makes it seem if you are in fact helping the world free itself from Russian tyranny. Fossil fuels themselves create and prop up many more dictators. And if we won't stop funding them, the war in Ukraine won't be the last war on the planet, unfortunately, to my biggest regret. And um, by rushing to build more fossil fuel assets, governments would dig us further into conflict, vulnerability, and instability, all of which we, will only worsen the climate crisis. As long as we've dependent on fossil fuels, we will empower dictators like Putin, who use fossil fuel money to launch devastating wars. As regular people all over the world, we can advocate for such moves by divesting from fossil fuels, the single most important action all of us can take right now. And um, the atrocities that Putin and Russia have committed in my country have opened the world eyes, but this is hardly the first time fossil fuels have funded acts of aggression that have killed thousands and created millions of refugees. We have the technology and the means to enact a just transition to a safer future for all right now. Wind and solar still remain the cheapest sources of electricity in most of the world. And investments in renewable energy hit a record high of 755 billion last year. And the IEA expects global energy investment to increase by 8% in 2022, mainly through clean energy investments. Just think if every dollar invested into fossil, uh, divested from fossil fuels, uh, reinvested into renewable energy, we transform our way of life, prevent future wars, and save countless lives. So just better be in this 80% trying to reach. To, to, to open a new door to absolutely new economic world and new economic system that does not oppress or violate anyone. And um, we, will, we can do it all together. Ending our dependency on oil and gas is the best way to stop fueling, fueling uh, wars against a wars again, the country, Ukraine and many other countries to protect where the conflicts fueled by fossil fuels are still going on. To protect the public at home and abroad, we must break our dependence on fossil fuels that are unpredictable, volatile, and drive the dual crisis of climate change and biodiversity loss as well. We need all out mobilization to build renewable energy in Europe and around the world. And it starts by divesting from fossil fuels. This will help us end the war in my country and rebuild the war from the war ashes because there will be a huge investment opportunities into the green sectors after the war ends. It's not acceptable to allow the war become a trigger for a new wave of fossil fossil fueled colonialism and expansion of the oil and gas industry in the global south or export of fracked gas from the US via LNG ships in the world affected by climate crisis, there is no room anywhere for new fossil fuel infrastructure and additional production of oil and gas, which instead should contract globally. This is what science tells us. We have the historic chance to end the global economic dependency on fossil fuels and tackle climate emergency in the robust way by pushing for a quick energy transition and expanding the use of clean energy. Please join our coalition, stand with Ukraine and support our efforts to ban first all fossil fuels from Russia and then phase out fossil fuels globally. Because the soon we can end our addiction to fossil fuels, the soon we can all live in peace. Thank you so much. Okay, I think now I'm going to invite Annika Gage to share a little bit about PPF's GA Witness and the work that they've been doing there. Um, Annika is a former PPF GA intern, and she's also the current co-moderator of the GA committee. So I believe she's going to share a little bit about what PPF has been up to. 
Thank you, Valerie. Um, that is correct. Uh, I'm Annika. I'm currently living in Louisville, Kentucky, um, and I got connected with the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship in 2016. Um, and in addition to sharing a little bit about what we have been doing, I wanted to extend an invitation to this group. Um, PPF is a nonprofit. Our roots go all the way back to World War II, supporting conscientious objectors. All of that work has been done by volunteers, and all of that work has been done with volunteer funding. If you have valued what we've shared over GA, or if you valued what you've heard from some of the speakers tonight, I would welcome you to um, say thank you and share that with a donation. That's what enables us to do the kind of adv advocacy we've been doing. This year, that has looked a lot like um, providing information, advocacy um, for the overtures that are on the docket at GA. Um, we have written briefing papers, plenary papers, letting commissioners know what they're going to be looking at, editing, voting on, and how it relates to peacemaking, how divestment relates to peacemaking, how transgender activism relates to peacemaking, um, and helping to, to help folks see holistically, what it means to do ministry and to do peacemaking hand in hand. Um, this year has also been somewhat exploratory as GA has been in a format none of us have ever engaged before. We've had a team on the ground in Louisville talking to commissioners one-on-one -on -one as possible um, and helping to figure out what will good advocacy look like in the future. We've also had a digital organizing group that has been doing a lot of that work. They're the folks behind the Facebook page if you've been following there for updates and they're the folks who are uh, behind the digital resources on our website. Our plenary paper talking about what's going to go before the plenary this week is will also be available there. I would encourage you to check it out. Um, and part of our work too has been engaging beyond the borders of the Presbyterian Church. Um, that has looked a little bit like engaging the Kentucky Health and Justice Network, which is a local organization who we anticipate is going to be hit pretty heavily um, with the new Supreme Court ruling regarding abortion access. Um, and of course, it has looked like lifting the voices of the peace seekers here, Reverend Harry Ebert, Miranda Viscoli, Reverend Bart Smith, and our speaker Svetlana Romanko. Um, we value their work, we wanna connect you with them um, and we are able to do that with the gifts that you give. So if you are able to share, we would greatly appreciate it and welcome you into the peacemaking world. I think we are going to start wrapping up our time together by playing one final Kahoot. Um, and this is a doozy. So let's get started. Remember, the goal is to come up with the greatest, most creative nickname. I want a nickname where I have no idea who you are. You hear that, Timothy? You hear that? Immediately. Yes, we love John Calvin. We love a lampshade, a tree hugger. Ooh, piano, always here to play. Yes, please. Give it another minute before we get this party started. Okay, let's do this thing. Our very first question, this is our David Kahoot. Who is currently serving as the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship's interim executive director? That's right, people, we've got options. Whoever votes for the most actually gets to have it now. So I would consider voting for Rihanna, but I won't push anybody. 
That's right. And a landslide. It is our one and only David. Beep boop is in the lead. David has three children, two grandchildren, but most importantly, he has a sweet, sweet doggo. What is the name of this pup? Mr. Mosby, Mr. Patriot, Mr. Doggo, or Mr. Bounce? Lots of options, lots of formal. Yes, our very own Mr. Bounce. I could not find a photo, but luckily we have him right here. Oh, thanks be to God for doggos. Am I right? Beep boop, still in the lead. Next question. David joined the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship in the early 2000s, but when did he start wrangling interns with Colleen for General Assembly? In 1776? <laughs> it's my go-to answer for this entire event. I think it's funny, but no one else does, and that's fine. Yeah, 2016. Uh, it's been a little bit. Beep boop, still in the lead, holding on to that sweet, sweet victory. What famous Presbyterian had the honor of meeting David? Mark Twain, or Mr. Rogers, Sally Ride, that's right, first woman in, or American woman in space, or Shirley Temple, who's Presbyterian. Did you know that? Because I sure didn't. That's right, Mr. Rogers had the distinct honor of meeting David one time. Tim Ho, coming up high. He's got four answers in a row correctly, but he's been answering them too slow, so he couldn't win. What is the doctorate from DePaul University that David currently holds? Ministry, philosophy, oceanography, or healthcare administration, all of which very important. But as we all know, David is a philosopher and a champion in his field. For our David Kahoot, number in third place, we have Petunia. Go off, Queen. In our second place, we have Timo. And number one in the charts, a winner, winner, chicken dinner. It was I. I was right to be concerned. And this is the aforementioned Mr. Bounce. Cutest puppy ever. Up down, sweetie pie. Good morning. I mean, it is breakfast, right? And if not good morning, if that's not right, I will just say on behalf of PPF, a belated welcome and a really heartfelt thank you for being here, for being who you are. Um, and we are so glad that you are with us for this Peace Breakfast celebration. It is my great privilege to serve as PPF's Interim Executive Director. You have heard a lot this evening about the work, and I am not going to add on beyond saying again, thank you for making it possible for us to do the work of advocating for a fossil-free future for advocating for gun violence prevention, for the work of our General Assembly advocacy, for our work in abolition, the work of our Peace Church Working Group. Thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you. I think it was Ari Nowen who observed that gratitude is the fundamental attitude common to all authentic religious expression. That observation comes to my mind, particularly on the July 4th weekend, because to express gratitude is a reminder that we are not alone, right? If you say thank you, it implies somebody else in the world along with you. It acknowledges that we cannot make it on our own. And that simple acknowledgement of our interdependence is for me a great antidote to the prevailing myths of rugged individualism and the too often thoughtless independence blindly celebrated around this time of year. Of course, in gratitude, we also turn to God, source of life itself. Life is a gift from the loving heart of a generous creator. 
and saying thanks, then our hearts can break open. And in a profound sense, we can be opened, reopened, opened anew to that calling to the simple gift of hearts that, as the Shakers sang it, hearts that come round right. I think it was Jesus, though it might have been Matt Black, who taught us that where our treasure is, there our heart shall be, right? Okay, Jesus said it, but Matt sang it. If you want your broken, open heart to be in this work, then put your treasure there. Give. There is and has been um, a couple of times a link in the chat for making a peace breakfast donation. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. All of of your generous hearts. And of course, we want all of you. Start with your heart, but we want all of you. So there's also going to be a link for joining the PPF Activist Council and getting more involved in the work that we have shared about this evening and all of the rest of the work of the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship. You make this possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All of us together make possible a community that seeks the peace of God. So as we draw toward a close tonight, let us seek God's peace together. Please join me in a time of prayer. God of infinite shalom, we are a people of peace yesterday, today, and tomorrow, striving to say no to war and its weapons, seeking to say yes to your call to love our neighbors as ourselves. We come, of course, as a broken people complicit in a world of violence, and yet we seek the things that make for peace. Things such as the courage to stand with those who have no power, the humility to enter relationships by letting go of our privileges, the boldness to witness for peace in our churches, our communities, and in the wider world. God, we give you thanks tonight, especially for the profound and powerful witnesses of Miranda Viscoli and Harry Eberts, Bart Smith, of Svetlana Romanko. May the stories that we have heard tonight inspire us to the wor work of building a more peaceful tomorrow. We lift this prayer in the name of the Prince of Peace, in whose way we walk together. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this evening for a little bit of fun and a little bit of meaningful connection. We welcome you to hang around. Um, if anybody wants to just catch up or debrief on what's been going on with General Assembly, um, we're happy to set up some breakout rooms. But other than that, Thank you again for being with us tonight, for making gifts to PPF, and go in peace, or stay in peace.